Hey guys, it's me Justin again here with you all. Today we're going to be reconstructing history, doing the uh, thatched house, the Indian structure that has the thatched roof. Now the thatching refers to the prairie grass roof that is laid in layers to create the thatched dwelling of our southeastern thatched house. Um, today we're going to go into depth on how we actually apply the grass to the roof and the layers using the clamping method. And we'll also be, uh, later on, we'll be showing you how we actually harvest the grass from our uh, restored prairie here at George Rogers Clark Park. Okay, so here we go, another adventure. Okay guys, so what we're doing here today is we're gonna be thatching this roof using the clamp method. Now we're using historic methods and materials, but we're gonna be using modern fasteners. And this little technique that I used, uh, learned from my Irishman, Mr. William, uh, he's a master thatcher out of Ireland. Uh, he actually takes a uh, rebar tie wire with a little washer and a, a little screw and he literally uses a long taper uh, Phillips head bit here so that what you get is an effect with if you hold on to that Bailey and oh yeah here's Bailey and Bailey's gonna our intern gonna be helping us today and then we got Jake back here he's gonna be uh, pitching up some of the uh, bundles of grass for us so what we do with this is this kind of hooks into here you know just like a regular drill and then it looks length you can stick it in through the grass and fasten it to the beams on the house so this is a very modern method of the primitive way uh, back in the old days in prehistory uh, it would have been the exact same method except it would have all been wood in the springtime we would gather a willow usually black willow and that's when the bark can strip off right so you get your branches as we're here we're going to be using metal fencing for our clamp in the old days it would have been this willow branch and then the bark would have took the place of the metal clamp that we're a uh, tie that we're going to be screwing in and it would have just went through to a rafter and tied to that clamp therefore sandwiching those bundles of grass onto the roof to create a watertight layer but we hear our problem here at the park is that um, things are constantly rotting and no one really lives in these structures uh, Back in the old days, they were living them, running the critters out. There was always a fire going. They were always cooking, always heating. And so that would fight the rot. So here we have to do modern things, modern fasteners, not only because we are in 2020 here and uh, OSHA does have construction standards to where it has to be safe for the public to go into these buildings. So we use a lot of modern fasteners uh, applied to old construction techniques with very natural materials just to give us a little bit more longer time uh, to fight the rot off and, and with, as with the natural bark it just rots really quick okay so our first step here is I'm gonna hand these off to Bailey I'm gonna go up here to the top of the ladder and uh, Jake is gonna be handing us handing me bundles of grass and I'm gonna be stuffing them underneath the wire clamp here and as you can see I already have one of those clamps screwed in right here that's holding it in position uh, I will undo that and I'll need to put a little bit of a space here just so it makes it now this is what the modern stuff makes it more difficult because with the stick it's real flexible and it's one thing and you can just hold it up and stick it in there but with the metal it's a little bit more different but we get a lot more longer time out of it okay so i'll take this first one here jake and we're going to get right up underneath of here it gets kind of complicated go up here try to get it under that clamp wrestling in there a little bit now these are all bundled from the big blue stem prairie grass which here in a little bit if Bailey if you want to come here and put a hand right here and just kind of steady that okay very good and I'm gonna to try to get in here and run this bundle grab my clamp that I already have screwed in from earlier run it up through the wire like so get up a little bit higher here we'll bring it down we want to get good coverage so we have a good overlap all right now i'll temporarily actually i think i can go ahead and put this one in pretty solid and i'm gonna go off further so it puts a good stretch on everything and then bring that clamp in 
and wire it down like so. Now, let's see if we can let go there. Yes, wonderful. Okay, Bailey, give me one of those and the drill down there, if you don't mind. So this is that technique where we take the drill, we set it on there. Now this doesn't make much of a difference right now because I'm real exposed right here. But as the layers go up, it gets very thick and you can't see the rafters underneath. So the long thing really works well to identify where that rafter is. But right now, just gonna set that next anchor point. Works out really well. Hand this back to you, Bailey. All right, and then I turn to Jake, and he's already ready to go. Right, okay. Yeah, stick that in there, Jake. Try not to break the end. Watch the ladder. Oh, very good. I like that. Now we got some technique rolling. All right, same deal. Went a lot easier that time. Now we know what we're doing. All right, so Bailey's got that. Jake just hands me another one, just like he did that time. Try not to break it. Keep it all even, all the same. There we go. Very good. All right. Going up. All right. Now my ladder's in the way. So hold that for just a second, Bailey, right where you're at. Move the ladder on down. All right. Slide that in there. Bailey puts a hand on it. Now I got to grab that wire that we just put in there. pretty good too so let's just go ahead and fasten that takes approximately seven acres of prairie grass to thatch one of these roofs uh, we're using a uh, type of uh, oh, hold on I need to put a fastener in real quick um, over in Europe they use a lot of uh, wheat straw they also use a water reed, um, as well as a, a type of willow called heather to thatch their roofs. I'm gonna take get that uh, drill from you there. Put in another clamp, another fastener. So you see, if it, what this would, if this were a stick here, we would then have the willow, the bark that came off of it, would go through the rafter and up around and serve the same purpose as this does. Uh, to be more traditional in an older way. Okay, so we got a fastener. Very good. That's actually working. I'm so not used to having help with these things, I don't even know how to work with people anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it works so much better with help. It really does. Now, what'll happen is, is I'll go completely across with this as far as I can to the side. And then we'll start the next layer. And that next layer, the butt ends like you see here, will start here to cover that wire. And then as we go along and we get an entire row in, I'll then come back with a knife and cut the strings that are bundling the ends together like you see here. Because if you can see, there's some gaps, mm -hmm. right? So you cut that and then you spread and then half of the bundle will be shoved up so we get a lot more coverage. And then the next layer will come on the same way and it'll get shoved up and it'll all cover and you won't even see like if you saw on the front you see no wire you see no nothing because it all gets covered and you end up with an ironclad building that's superiorly strong and won't rot very quick at all um, these houses will last about 20 years once completely thatched it all works together on gravity to help itself all right, I think I'm just gonna temporarily do that one because we can get another one beside. All right, Jake, here we come with another. Boy, that one's really scattered around the head. Here we go. All right. <laughs> uh oh, got a problem again. My ladder's in the way. Bailey, will you put a hand on that for just a second? Yeah. Way easier with help. Oh my god. You should try to do it like an octopus. It's a lot funner that way. Okay, we'll get a good shove over, and that's important. I felt something break behind me.
in the England and Ireland and places like that, this is still a very much modern practice. There are many places where um, it is actually the building code that you have to have a percentage of your house covered in thatching. Um, so a lot of these techniques we borrowed from Europe for the modern thatching way. How many we got left? We're getting close to the end here. We'll thatch out with everything we got. And then, you see, as we get more and more layers, it holds itself. Gravity and then friction between the layers of grass, it kind of it has like a, a ziplock effect and it kind of holds everything together. So as we get further along, we'll then begin to shape it and shape the different parts of it here. Do you want another tie? Yeah, I need another tie. Very good, thank you. Last one. Last one. Do you need another? No. Oh man, she's doing accents. <laughs> Why are you two laughing at that? They laugh all the time. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> I thought she was saying it. I said, <laughs> Nope, I'm done. <laughs> what happened? There's a large arachnid. Yonder, I will be over on here. On me? No, it was on the roof. It's on you. Okay. Oh that's my. Okay. Oh, oh, we need a holder. Can you hold that? <laughs> Hang on, I'll, I'll drop it. Okay, so you're getting a real good oh. idea. We're coming to the end. Just, <laughs> I see it. Of our grass here, and we're going to move on to our prairie area and uh, begin the uh, har showing you how we harvest this grass and what we do. I saw it, I saw it. I'm <laughs> gonna get it people. on camera. Look, people. Oh, yeah. That's why I ran away. Is that away. a hognia? That is, yeah, a running spider. A running yeah. spider? Yeah, you probably said the scientific name. I always say the common name. That's, yeah, there he is. All right. He's living on the Indian house. Yep, he made me run All away. All right, so now what I'll do, we got the spider, we'll try not to bother him. I'll just push <laughs> these up a little bit. And then later if we find out things aren't staying straight, we'll add in some more of the little fasteners. Like there could be one here for sure. Let's see, where is our, let's get a fastener off of you there, Bailey. There you go, take this. Now this is where the long thing works out because I can use it as a probe and fill in there and see if I can't find, let's see, there's one right there. All right, there's one. Okay, so I got a little cross member in there. We got this loose area where the grass is slipping, so we got to do something, right? So I'm going to go in. We have officially lost Bailey. <laughs> there it is. Okay, now then, if Jake... Put your hand right up here and smack down on that roof, huh? Okay. See what they're doing here. All right, now let's see if that holds. Yes, it does. So we'll do things like that, and then again, as we get another layer that comes in on top of that, the friction and the weight will hold it so we can adjust more as we go. But for now, we're now going to gather up all of our stuff, and we're all going to head up to the prairie, talk about a little bit about how we harvest this grass. Okay. Hey, guys. Here we are up here at the prairie at George Rogers Clark Park at our restored uh, native prairie area that we have here. Um, today, we're going to be working, looking for the big blue stem prairie grass. Uh, that's this beautiful grass that you see here. Uh, the natives refer to this grass as turkey foot grass. And that's because of the way it tassels out. It resembles a turkey's foot in the way it has those like three uh, toes that stick out there. Uh, so turkey foot grass. And then also, uh, again, the big blue stem grass. I think the type we have here at the park is called Red Bull. Uh, it has a, uh, instead of a dark blue tinge at the stem base, it has a reddish, purplish kind of a tint. And so I believe we have mainly what you're seeing here, the tall blown stuff, is the Red Bull Big Blue Stem Prairie Grass. Uh, we might have a little bit of blue bison 
uh, big blue stem grass, but it's in very little groups here and there, and I actually don't see any of it here. So right here. So this is what we're looking for. And here we are about November uh, uh, the 5th or so, and I started harvesting November 2nd. And what the reason is behind that is, is the, the grass. Uh, the seed, the tassel at the top that you see there. See how it just easily came off and the wind takes it? That's how we spread the grass and it becomes very prolific that way. So we wait till November when it starts to do this shedding method where every time we touch it, it falls off. So as we do our harvesting, we're actually uh, enhancing the harvest to how much more we get so it just continually replants. Um, also here in the prairie at George Rogers Clark Park, we have this wonderful little plant here called Rattlesnake Master. Uh, it's a type of native yucca, and the leaves of the Rattlesnake Master down here that are down by the base, these can get anywhere from two to three foot tall. Uh, they're kind of short here in our area because we're kind of in a dry area for our prairie, so it's a little bit less, they don't get as long. Uh, but this material has been used by American Indians uh, throughout time. At, at, uh, down at uh, the caves down in Kentucky, they found slippers, or uh, like a pair of flip-flops, made out of this rattlesnake master grass. Uh, so it's been valued for its fiber and its ability to spread apart and to be corded and woven and that sort of thing. Um, the reason it's called rattlesnake master is because the root if you dig that root and you chew the root, it is supposed to help if you're bit by rattlesnakes, also or in any type of uh, uh, venomous snake. Um, so it's a wonderful, that's the rattlesnake master part of it. Um, also, people would plant these outside their homes uh, to ward off the snakes as well. Uh, this is a, a endangered, or it, it's, an, it's kind of a rare plant the rattlesnake master and so it's really nice to see it in a restored native prairie this is our native form of yucca um, today we're going to be coming in and we're going to show you how we're going to harvest the big blue stem grass for thatching that's our process that we're using that we showed you earlier on how to do on the roofs and we'll be uh, putting them into bundles and that's what Bailey and Jake are doing over here right now and um, we're going to get to that uh, we use a mechanized way. We use a brush cutter system uh, to cut this. We would much, much rather have done a historic sickle and saw. And a matter of fact, I had bought one from an antique store, real nice, real good shape sickle saw, so we could do a historic uh, way of harvesting. And it was put in the longhouse. It disappeared, it walked away. So we're down to a mechanized form using a brush cutter system. So we're gonna go on and I'm gonna show you guys how we go ahead and harvest this grass. <laughs> did the harvesting and we've been very careful in the way we cut that so that the grass lays down and stays together you don't want it scattered around everywhere because you want to come into your grass right in here and you want to see the butt ends these these stalks are all we want we want to get that so it's nice and rot resistant if we leave a lot of chaff or a lot of the leaf in there that's where moisture collects and begins to rot things so what I do is I go right over to where I see nothing but stalk. I get it in them all there and I just pull it out like so, keeping all them stalks together and I hold it up like a dead rabbit by its ears. Then I come in with a gloved, leather gloved hand. Oh my God, this part's so important. You will cut your hands into a million pieces. It's like a thousand razor blades, you'd never guess it. But come in with your left hand that has a leather glove and strip that chaff, that grass away. I move down a little bit, spin, and then pull that chaff out. And you'll see it come down just to the main stalk. Move my hand down a little bit more, keep in control of my stalk. Okay, that's pretty clean. Now I come out to a somewhat level surface and I do a ring and I drop it. 
That's going to line up all my butts at the end really good there. Like you see there. Now that's pretty good. We ain't going to get perfection because we need a gazillion of them. So then you take it and you come on down this way. I guess we could have put it a little closer, but that's all right. And we have just a wonderful little saw horse here. And we put that in there being sure to try to keep them butt ends together is nice because that's what's going to make it a high quality shingle like so we can have some consistency when we put it on the roof and work with it. So we keep it nice and we'll continue to fill this up until it's filled all the way up to here and then we'll show you the next step. So we're going to keep stripping it until we get it filled and then we'll show you what the next step is. Okay, so we've got about well, enough grass on here uh, to uh, make a decent sized bundle. Uh, they're made big enough so that we can work it. We can spread it out. We can shove it up and get another secondary layering out of it. So they need to be about this big around, if not even a little bit bigger. But the point is, is to come in with a nice leather glove again, or you'll cut yourself into many pieces, and just kind of start bringing them butt ends together to kind of get a cohesive unit there. Okay, so that's pretty good. Okay, so now I'll come over to my string. And since I have this weak little jute, I think I'll double it twice. We'll cut it off there. Okay, get that out of my way. Then I'll come in with that and we'll go in underneath, through and under. Of course, you know, people are always like, well, what's up with the metal thing? You can do the same thing with a few sticks. Put two sticks and a cross uh, on one side, two sticks and a cross on the other side, suspend a strip between them. You got the same kind of look mold kind of uh, frame effect so then we'll just tie that in and i'll cinch it down real good we want that bundle nice and tight um, that's just going to make it that much more waterproof because we're getting all those uh, uh stems lined up together in a nice way okay so that's the first step now i'll pull it off of the frame and then i'll bear hug it kind of organize all the ends and drop it okay and I come up and I get my hands around here. I'm trying to organize and try to keep everything parallel. And I beat the end of it to so get even more, even more straight. Getting all of them down there in the same line. Okay, that's pretty good. Now that's a real straight bump. Put it back on there. And I'll put one more binder on there. Just to give us some strength as we transport it and move it around from the prairie down to the village area. Okay. Oh, little thorns. Those thorns are in there. Oh, they're killers. That's another reason why you got to have the leather glove, right? <laughs> okay. So as we found out, you know, about two, uh, two three years ago, we started doing this uh, thatch dwelling. And uh, we got a little section over there. It's a little triangle area. And when we first did, I got eight bundles out of there. Eight bundles like this of the prairie grass. Then the next year came, and I got ten bundles out of the same area, just like this. Then this year came, and I already did it over there, got 12 bundles out of that area. So it's really working well for the prairie. I think it's because we're getting all those hands on there and stripping each individual piece. It's really spreading the seed. And so our, our, our prairie area doubles in strength and capacity every couple of years. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's been a real good uh, relationship with the prairie with the thatched roof. Uh, this is how we finish a bundle, nice and neat. We'll continue to do these just like this. This is a perfect example uh, until we have like a gazillion of them and we'll keep uh, doing the roof. Uh, we're liable to run out of the grass. It's been, like I said, it's been three years now. Um, we have uh, three sections of the roof done. We're now working on the fourth and final section of the roof. So we're hoping that this year we'll complete the thatching for the roof. That would be nice. Till we see you all next time.